new national poll shows Joe Biden and Donald Trump are tied just more than a week before their first 2024 presidential debate. Some numbers we're seeing in various polling comes after a series of recent unedited videos which have sparked fresh concern about President Biden's age and mostly mental fitness. Just yesterday, there was this moment. Thanks to all the members of Congress and Homeland Security Secretary. I'm not sure going to introduce you all the way. But all kidding aside, Secretary Marcus, as well as Secretary Becerra, and advocates and families for law enforcement, faith leaders, everybody who's here. Wow. Okay. Many on the left are trying to defend the president. His age is an asset. Uh -huh. He's wise. Yes, uh, he's wise. He has wisdom. He has experience. When the former pre ex-president defeated President Trump, made a mistake about one thing or another. He would make the same mistake seven times. But you won't say you've ever seen uh, any impairment on his part? Uh, the, the, the president has no impairment. But this is a very rigorous job, uh, and uh, the president has been able to do to this job every day for the past three years. However, recent polling finds the president's security is a major issue. This one. Trump is beating Biden by nearly two to one margin when it comes to having the mental sharpness to be president. 28% say Biden is too old to be president, compared with just 2% who say the same thing about president, former President Trump. A Fox poll also shows that most voters say Biden is not mentally sound enough to be president. Well, that's interesting. Those are all different ways of saying one single thing. They agree that he's not mentally fit to be president. David Avella, GOPAC chairman, and Matt Bennett, co-founder of Third Way and former Clinton White House deputy special assistant. Great to see you both. Um, you know, Matt, I'm going to start with you because to me this is really less about age and more about meeting the moments here at home and on the world stage with the most mental acuity that one can bring with him. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, these guys are functionally the same age. Donald Trump is 78 years old. And I think there can be all kinds of debates about who makes more gaffes. I mean, Trump confused No, I, I actually don't Haley. think that there can be debates because no, I, I haven't seen can. former President Trump falling and tripping and, and having those moments of, of wandering. And I, I'm saying irrespective of what we've seen in the last 96 hours. I mean, previously oh, wow. and leading up until that point. I mean, there have been I think that's some moments. Wrong. I mean, the, it's not true. I mean, d d uh, Trump well, we have some on wanders screen while off you talk. script. He talks, about, he talks about sharks and electric boats. He confuses people. He said that Joe Biden ran against Obama in a general election. I mean, he makes all kinds of mistakes. But I will say this. We can argue about this all day. These two guys are going to be on a stage with no notes, no aides, no inter intervention. No and Americans are going to be able to see who yeah. has more mental acuity. Uh, David. Where Matt and I agree is that in seven days, voters get to assess for themselves what, which of these two men have the mental acuity to be president of the United States. The biggest problem for President Biden is he will say many things that Americans disagree with. He will say the border, border is, is secure. And in poll after poll, we see that voters don't believe the border is secure. He will say that life is getting less expensive for Americans. And Americans will say, no, it's not. It's still very expensive, gasoline and food. And in area, issue area after issue area, the president is going to make statements that Americans just don't believe to be true. And as that helps inform their vote, um, and the great axiom of perception is reality. And when you sit at 38%, the perception is this guy's not doing the job. Matt? Look, I think that's right. We're going to have a debate about the issues, and we're going to, you know, first of all, we're going to talk about the fact that one of these guys has been convicted of 34 felonies. We're also going to what talk about, about the, the fact 38%? that. What about the 38%? that David just mentioned uh, for the Democratic president right now. I, I mean, I kind of, yeah, there's a, I, I wish you would actually sorry. talk to what he's saying because that, that's really where the debate is here. I mean, the conviction didn't move the needle for Joe Biden. So I don't know why you would want to go back to that. But what David Abella is talking about are all the ways that this polling is continuing to show that Americans are not happy with the man who's in office right now. Let me go forward, and I'll come right back to you, Matt. Uh, President Biden is struggling with key voting blocks, and he's losing support among Hispanic and black voters. He won with both groups.
troops in 2020. And former House Speaker Newt Gingrich says that is a big deal. Let's watch together. The number of Demo black Democrats and for that matter, Latino Democrats who are now undecided and potentially could switch to Trump are breathtaking. I think he will get a higher vote than any Republican since Eisenhower and may in fact exceed Eisenhower because the momentum for the next four months, I think, is all going to be in, by, in Trump's favor. Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, breathtaking for Trump, momentum for Trump. What's happening with Biden, Matt? The race is tied. You started the segment showing a poll showing the, both the 49 percent. Why is this it tied is a, if all those things are in place that you mentioned, though? Well, look, I think this is a historic election between a former and current president. So for the first time in a re-election campaign, we don't have a referendum on the president. We have a choice between two presidents. Hmm. Americans remember what happened under Trump. They see how chaotic and, and uh, mean-spirited he is every single day. And they have to weigh that against you know, some real concerns that they have about inflation and crime in the border. Those are not made-up things. Those are real, but they are uh, under control and they so are coming down. And so, they're going to have to make a judgment about which of these guys they trust more. So, David, what would you say to Matt? We learned last week that House Democrats are now meeting to start planning for a second Trump term and how they will try to stop his agenda. You see in swing state after swing state, when the president goes in, Democrat elected officials are nowhere to be seen. Those who are running for office and on the ballot for him this year, uh, particularly in key swing states, they happen to be busy that time. Those are signs that House Democrats and Senate Democrats and gubernatorial candidates are concerned about being seen with Joe Biden. When 38 percent think you're doing a good job and 56 percent think you're doing a bad job, you're in a hole and even your own party doesn't want to stand with you. President Biden reportedly is working on a debate strategy focusing on Trump being a convicted felon, exactly what Matt just talked about. But a Washington Examiner opinion piece titled Biden has no leg to stand on to attack Trump's character argues the problem with this, though, is that Biden's character is severely lacking and he cares more about himself and his political ambitions than he does about the public, despite what his campaign would have you to believe. Again, an op-ed in the Washington Examiner. Your response, Matt. I just thought it was complete nonsense. People have seen Donald Trump uh, now in public life for seven years. They know who he is. They know he ran for president the first time running on a racist lie about Barack Obama not being born in the United States. They know that he's accused people falsely of crimes, that he has attacked people for their disabilities. You know, they know that he's an adjudicated rapist and a convicted felon. There is no comparison between these two guys. You know, it's interesting. Um, didn't ask you to compare there. I just wanted you to respond to the Washington Examiner op-ed, which would have required you to talk about your guy. But you keep talking about to. Donald Trump, but you're not happy to because you don't. All right, David, go ahead. We get into these final months, Harris, and you have Donald Trump saying, look, I want to extend the tax cuts, the bipartisan tax cuts that we passed during my administration. We want to make sure that we are using every source of energy production to keep America going. I want to build up the national defense. And you have a Biden message of, oh, he's a convicted felon. Oh, January the 6th. And Americans are going to say, Donald Trump's the one focused on the issues I care about, and it, uh, that will have probably the biggest impact on who wins this All election. Right. Real quickly, Matt, you get the last few seconds. Uh, look, I hope it's an election about those issues because Donald Trump's running on 100% tariffs, which are taxes oh <laughs> on Americans. And if that's the case, we're going to win. I, I gave you a chance to say your guy's name. Oh, goodness. All right. Great to have you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Great debate. Happy Juneteenth, Thank Harris. you. Thank you. And right back at you. We're in it together as Americans. Absolutely. Yeah. Record high temperature.